Pine Valley Motorhomes, the deal will be handing over the Adria Coral 690SP. So starting off our walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle. You've got your lock and habitation door key which is the Adria key. And obviously you've got your fade key which unlocks and locks the car. So you can open the door, unlock it like so. You've got your awning, you've got your fridge vent covers. And then you've got your toilet, so this is where you'd empty the toilet from, so this is your cassette. This is where the blade must be closed to lift this orange handle and slide out. Got some wheels there so you can drag it to the site instead of carrying it to your disposal point, which is normally beside or behind the toilet block itself. You then take the cover off, press this button and empty. Once you've emptied, you'd put some water in and just give it that little rinse empty again and then if you're using the liquid form of chemical you'd fill this up with chemical and put it in here or if you're using the tablet form you put a pint of fresh water in and drop a tablet into the cassette you can either put one direct into the box or you can drop one through the toilet and then that just slides away back in there and locates and then you can lock this so Moving further down the vehicle, you've got your mains connectivity point here. So, you get your hooker blade, lift the flap, always hook the vehicle up first, and then hook the other end up to your sight, and obviously unhook the sight first, and then unhook the vehicle. But when unhooking the vehicle, you would press this blue lever on the left hand side down to unhook the hooker blade. You've got your garage area here, so it's got your carpets in, it's got your own and winding handle in and your rafter bar and it's got your, this one has got corner studies on just here, so you put that on there and you'd wind your legs down should you want that extra bit of support for the back of the vehicle. Walking around at the back of the vehicle, you've got your parking sensors on the bottom here. Another access door to your garage, where your spare wheel is. Your vent for your heater. And then underneath you do have your waste water drop point. So you drive over a grid to drop this on site. Normally signed up waste disposal point, grey water waste, and you'd open that up. And there you go, that's just the water we've tested the vehicle with. And then here, LPG, liquid petroleum gas. This is your gas locker. Put some bottles on there to show you how it works. What you do is you'd always make sure that the bottles are securely strapped in like this when they're on in situ on the vehicle. You turn the bottle on and off from the top. Then you'd use a adjustable wrench or gas spanner. It's a left hand th thread for the pigtail opposites with the bean gas and then you'd nip it up. Always turn your bottles off when you're on the road door. And then you've got a little button here which is your reset button. So. You'd, press, you'd turn the bottle on, press that bot button in, it'll prime the system with gas and open the cross valve. And again, locks with the Adria key. Fresh water fill up point. So what I would advise is that you go and buy yourself a hose pipe with a, with a few ends because it's just mainly um, a brass tap on site. So you want the threaded end and you want the hose lock end and fill with a hose pipe but to leave it overflows until you're happy you've got enough water on board which you can't see on the main control panel itself. If you're travelling to a site you travel tend to travel with a maximum of 20 litres as it's better on fuel and gives you a better payload for your, your items on board but if you're going while camping you will have to take a full tank of diesel with you. Coming to the passenger door this is where you'd fill with diesel it opens with the main Fiat ignition key and you can fill with fuel. 
you've got your tyre pressures here, so 5.5 bar on the back which is 79.5 psi and 5 bar on the front which is 72.3. You've got a tool kit underneath here which has got a jack and a brace, a torn iron, everything to change that wheel or be towed off the road and your main engine battery lives underneath the floor and you've got your bonnet release. So we'll just take a quick look underneath the bonnet. I'll point out the various points. So this is your positive for giving or receiving a jump start here, your contact, and your negative is just this little bolt here near the passenger headlight. You've got your weight plate here, which you'd go off, so it's three and a half ton gross vehicle weight. If you put a tow bar on and tow it, you can tow up to five and a half ton train weight. You've got it, your pain code here for the Grigio aluminium, which is code 611. And then you've got your various liquids. So you've got your screen wash, power steering fluid, brake fluid, coolant, oil filler, and your oil dipstick just there. So stepping inside the vehicle, this is your main 12 volt control panel. So to turn the 12 volt on, you would just simply click here. And then opposite, it's like on a rocker switch, you can turn your pump on, which then allows you to use your taps, toilet and shower within the vehicle. But only put your pump on should you have sufficient water in the tank, otherwise there is a chance that you could burn the motor and the pump out. Coming down here, this is your charge of your battery. So you've got the battery at the back of the van, battery at the front, leisure and engine. So you go to, to leisure and then it'll light up and tell you. And it also indicates where on main to go up here. And then you've got your engine battery and then here is your water so you've got fresh water and then you've got your your waste water which is nothing in it so now in the kitchen area so you've got three gas rings once you've had the gas rings on allow it to cool before you put the glass lid down otherwise there is a risk that you could shatter the glass Just hold them in for a couple of seconds, allow the thermocouple to get warm before releasing, and then they'll stay lit. Like so. Next week you've got your tap, so this just proves that your water's working. And that is getting the temperature there on the hot. And the, and the cold and you've got a little bin in here which you can remove it just sits there and it's hidden by the cover above the hob you do have an extractor fan so you've got your, your light there and your fan which is designed for when using but you can also open the window when you've got the using the hob as well all your cupboards in here, so if you push the button and allow it to pop out and then lift the cupboard up, you've got storage up here, storage, and then you've got a three pin plug on 240 volt when hooked up, this'll work. Cutlery drawer, storage. Place to keep your wine bottles. And then in your carousel cupboard there, you've got quite a lot of storage which is underneath the sink and goes right to the back of the vehicle. So located just underneath your hand basin in the bedroom is your Truma Combi E controls. So this is your heating and hot water control system. So here you've got which source you want to go on. So two wiggly lines at the top is two kilowatts of electric. Just depending on what output your site gives you, you can either go on two kilowatts, one wiggly line which is one kilowatt, the gas flame on its own here, which is gas on its own, which you'd use if you're wild camping and you weren't hooked up, as you won't have any other source to heat the vehicle or the water bar gas. You've got gas in one kilowatt and gas in two. If it was really cold or you are in desperate need of water, depending on what you wanted to use the, the sources for, sometimes you can have the hot water and the heating on together or it might be the summer months and you just want the hot water on. Gas and 2 kilowatts of electric is obviously both sources together which will reduce your 
heating of the vehicle or the water substantially and get everything to temperature a lot quicker. I would always, if you are heating the vehicle like this, I would always start it with in the winter months with gas and electric together for about 20 minutes, get it at the temperature, and then if you were on a site, you would then want to think about not wasting your gas, switch your gas off and go back to two kilowatts of electric. And below, you've got off in the middle, you've got 60 degrees of heating your water alone, 40 degrees of heating your water alone, so 60 degrees is normally um, dishes water, 40 normally shower room water, if you've got no water in, you've got the gas flame, which is heating on its own, which is just heating the vehicle. And then you've got heating and 60 degrees of heating your water. And then one to five is just your thermostat. So five is about 30 degrees. And then obviously three to two and a half is about 15. I wonder if this little flap in the other side of the bed is where your gas taps are, so these red taps are gas isolation taps. Any problems with gas, turn it off at the bottle, but you can isolate either the hob, the cooker, the fridge and the hot water boiler system. But these are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced. And across from the kitchen area, you've got your Smev oven. which like, like so, and again hold just to allow the thermocouple to get warm and then release, and you've got a light on there as well. And then below you've got your Dometic fridge with freezer box. So once you've finished using this for the season, if you do take your remaining shopping items out of here, so any um, leftover foods, take out, clean the freezer box and the fridge and then the last thing you want to do is shut the door so what you need to do is these are your travel catches just put your travel catch in the lock position and just rest it up against these little tabs here which is normally designed to lock in like so but if you just lock it and rest it in and of course you would obviously lock the fridge when you're traveling if you've got shopping in to stop it from opening when driving and then coming onto the controls so you've got off here on gas which is for wild camping and it'll self ignite mains power which is the plug which is 240 volt battery which is designed to keep this shopping at, te at the temperature it was when departing, so it's a feed from the engine alternator battery, not from the leisure battery. So here you would, if you're lucky enough to keep this at home, you'd hook the vehicle up a day or two before, put your shopping in the night before, allow it all to chill, and then you'd put on a battery. But this fridge does have the benefit of being automatic, and automatic um, basically reads all the sources, sees what's available at what time and it'll switch on the best source so if you were hooked up and then you want to unhook but your gas was to be open it would switch over to gas but then if you want to start the engine it would go on to the 12 volt setting but you can manually do it if you want but you'd use gas when you're wild camping and weren't hooked up you'd use hook up on more sites and obviously you'd use battery when you were traveling to keep your shopping fresh and then this little button here is designed to stop the freezer door from sticking shut on the rubber when the freezer box is on at full temperature and across you've got your temperature so you might want it on max in the summer but then you might just want to drop it down ever so slightly in the winter months as the back of the fridge is cold from the side of the vehicle anyway so it would get it working the temperature like that as well and then with the bed you've got the headboard that lifts you up so if you want to use it as a bit of a day bed during the day you can do so you just pull the mattress forward pull this down you will then have to just put your hand here and lift it and allow it to fold back 
into the nighttime position of lying flat. But if you want it to lie up during the night, you can get yourself comfy as it's got different settings. And that's off both sides, so it's not just one, it's two separate recliners. Your reading lights in the bedroom, I've got a little switch on the side there so you can have them on individually or both together. But these are meant for reading lights, so if one of you wanted to have a light on and one of you didn't, they've got individual switches on. Your roof light above the bed is on a winding handle here, so when the red is shown, it means it's locked securely. So you just wind it and it will open and close. But do make sure all your windows and skylights are closed securely before you do start driving. And then you do have a blackout blind and a fly screen. And then this is how to convert the side facing bench seat into a travelling seat. So what you do is, this is your backrest. And that's your base. But what you do need to do is, this frame lifts out. So you'd unclip this. Just, just a safety feature lift it out and then this will clip into here when you want to be on site that's if you want to make this seat as a fifth belt and then you just put the, the two catches at the back off of these straps just to stop this cushion from falling off when traveling so they just clip onto there like so that sits on there, and then the backrest goes just under there. But located underneath this seat, through this hatch here, is your trip switches at the back, your fuse board, which is um, on that blue block there. So they're all your 12 volt fuses, so I would go and buy some spares for your lights, pumps and various items on the vehicle. And then you've got your main leisure battery here. So located underneath the two fixed travelling seats is your fresh water tank. And in the corner here you'll see that little white cap. It's a lever which you'd pull and that's how you drain off your fresh water. So, so whether you've taken on contaminated water, whether you're winterizing the vehicle or whether you're just not using it and you don't want the water to go stagnant, you just simply pull that lever up and it will drain directly underneath the chassis. But there is access in there so you can clean it once a season should you wish. With the various cleaners that are on the market for your fresh water tank. Behind the passenger seat underneath the table is a heater here for your back passengers. This is for when the engine is running. It takes a feed off the um, heater of the cab and it'll blow the hot air into the back. So you've got a temperature adjuster here and then you've got your various fan speeds here to keep your back passengers warm. Or of course you can use it in the summer months to keep them cool. And now in the front of the cab, you've got your handbrake to your right, electric windows and electric mirror adjustments, which is just the top and the bottom, which is the blind spot. You've got your Remis car blinds on the windscreen, so you just push these up and down, which releases the blind. Take that to the middle, and obviously do the same on the other side. And they just clip together. You might want to put a elastic band or hair bubble or something around here if it's going to be a windy night as they're just magnets. So should the van start moving in the wind, they might tend to ping open. And then on the sides, side windows, you do have your screens which you just press stood on there. So to black the side windows out, you just press stood these on here. them behind the door there and that will black the passenger and driver's window out. Coming back to the controls so you 
You do have mode which goes through the screen in the middle, puts a speed beep and so on on if you want one. And then you've got your headlight adjustment, your trip computer's on the end of here, so it tells you your temperature, your range of fuel left in the tank, your mileage that you've done since resetting the trip computer, your miles per gallon, and your instant miles per gallon when the engine's running, your average speed, and the time. You've got lights, side lights and main lights there, indicators. Six speed manual gearbox with lift in a reverse. Locks and unlocks the cab doors on an evening, hazards. Rear fogs and heated mirrors. Temperature on the outside ring, fan speed on the in, must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work, which is this button here. And then you've got the distribution, and either way, where you want to recirculate the air within the vehicle or bring fresh air in. You have 12 volt points there, and a cigarette lighter, and a lockable glove box. And then you've got this Panasonic radio, so you can press hold source, which is this blue button here, to turn on and off. Which will either give you FM, AM, or you can change over to USB, which is in the corner there.